Hey, <laughs> good afternoon everyone. Welcome back. Look at this. Can you hear that? It's raining. <laughs> I can't tell you. I can't remember the last time we had rain here. I kid you not. I mean, just look at the lawn. Check the lawn out. It's dead. The grass is dead here. There's nowhere here where I live has got any green patch of grass. It's just crazy. We've finally got a bit of rain. I think the last time it rained was about three, four months ago. It's crazy. So let's hope that's changing. Well, so we've got another video today and it's a cooking video. And we're going to cook. I love the noise of that rain. I'm going to cook a spatchcock chook. So I bought a two and a half kilo chicken at Coles this morning. And what I've done is I've uh, put some rub on it. I used the Pitt Brothers rub. Actually, I'll go, I'll go grab the rub that I used and show you. And I used the barbecue peri peri rub for this one. So right here, if you have a look at that, hang on, turn around the right way. So what I've done with that is I've mixed up some uh, olive oil, good good quality olive oil, and I mixed it with this barbecue peri peri rub till it's a fairly thick paste, but not too thick, but thick enough so you can use like a like a little old like a paintbrush or some of sort uh, to to paint it over. Well, I wouldn't say paint it; you brush it over the whole chicken. And I'll show you. So I've let I've done that a little while ago and I'll show you what it looks like after it's been marinated for a while. So there it is here. So what I've done is spatchcock the chicken. Basically spatchcock the chicken is where you cut the backbone out, the, uh, the breastbone or whatever, the middle bone. I think it's the backbone. Cut that out, turn it over and push it down flat and you've got your whole chicken is, is flat. And what we're going to cook it on we're going to cook it on the fire pit. So you can see I've got the Drifter Stockton fire pit. Now guys, I end up getting one of these fire pit surrounds. And actually Luke gave me one, so thanks Luke. Now I've already done a review video on this one. But I will do another one when I'm out camping next time. So I've got the Drifter fire pits around. And the other addition there I haven't showed you yet, that's the stainless steel charcoal grate. Okay, so that's an option that you can purchase that Drifter sells. And another option that Drifter sells is the stainless steel windshield. Okay, and here, right beside me, you can see the stainless steel, food grade quality stainless steel grill that's supplied with these Drifter Stockton. So I went uptown this morning, I went and got some good quality Gigi charcoal. So this uh, is not the Pitt Brothers charcoal. We cannot buy the Pitt Brothers charcoal where I live, even though I've tried to uh, get people to stock it, but no one seems to want to stock any of the Pitt Brother line of stuff here where I live. So I bought this at Barbecues Galore. It's uh, different to the one I bought last time. Uh, it's a lot bigger, chunkier pieces, so I think this should last quite, quite some time. Uh, so I'm going to let that do its job, probably another 10 minutes, and then we'll put it in the fire pit. And then we'll put it in the fire pit, and then we'll put the grate with the grill on the top. And then what I'm going to do is put that chicken on the top. So when you're cooking the whole chicken, you want to... Oh, listen to that. Wow, well, it's getting dark out that way. Check that out. Over north side where I live, over just over the north side, they're getting some heavy rain. <laughs> I love it. It's beautiful. I, I didn't know this was rain. This is not forecast. This has come out out of the blue. We, we had no forecast of rain here. And I'm not too far from Fraser Island, so it's the time I'm filming this. Uh, hopefully, Fraser Island is getting some uh, rain over there to put out all those bushfires over there because Fraser Island's closed at the moment. I don't know how long it's going to be closed for. 
I have a feeling it's going to be closed for quite some time to be honest so but if we're getting some of this rain it's going to help enormously so yep now if I known it was going to rain I would have set up the hexatarp and I would have done all this under the tarp because I've been waiting I've been eager waiting for some rain to come so I can use some of this gear out in the weather and test it all but next time, I'm sure it'll rain again. So the Gigi charcoal is all lit, mostly lit. And I've put the grill on, the, so I've put the grill on the highest because you don't want to cook these too fast to heat. And I think even that, that might be, I might have to put a little bit less of the charcoal in late. Later, I might have to take some out. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll start, I'll put it on now and I'll start the cooking and see how it goes. So there she is guys, it's uh, I think the heat is actually pretty good, just got to watch out when you mix the oil, just want to make sure you try not to put too much oil on your chicken, because as the oil drips down your coals um, grab a light and they're on fire, so I've, I've actually had to take the chicken off when I first put it on and wait for it to drain off some of the oil a bit with the marinade that I've got on there. Now you can see it's, it's not too bad now, it's quite good now, so that should cook at a nice, nice low temperature. See, I, I want to cook these, these slowly. These are the parts that I cut off the, the backbone, so I can get the chicken the spatchcock, the chicken like so. Could do with more marinade in there. So what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some of the barbecue peri peri rub and just pour it on top of this here. A dry. I won't mix it with oil this time. But I reckon that's cooking pretty good now. So if you have a look down here you can see how much coal charcoal I've got under there. So welcome back. It's been cooking for an hour now. Now if I added some more of the Gigi charcoal in you can see those black pieces there. So that won't take too long to light up. So we're just cooking it nice and slow on a low heat. And when you do that you can see the chicken is just nice and brown. It gets on the skin. Uh, so far it's a huge success it's going to take a little while yet before she's fully cooked you can see you can see there how she's raw in that part there Hey, welcome back. Well, as you saw in that uh, last footage or photo I just posted, it was a pretty good success, I reckon. It cooked really well. I probably haven't cooked it just a tad. I got a bit confused. I didn't realize the thermometer I was using was in degrees Celsius and not Fahrenheit. And I was actually looking at it and I said to me, Mum, gee, this looks like it's cooked. And lucky I checked it then, so it was good, but a little bit earlier would have been spot on. But I want to show you something. I'll just flick the camera around and check this out. So I particularly want to show you this. Look at that grill. Look how clean that is. That's the difference. Well, you've got a good quality food grade stainless steel grill it's so much easier to clean that was virtually just wipe off 
I've got like a very soft scrubbing brush with just the soft bristles on it that I use and some dishwashing detergent. Just scrubbed it for a short while, a couple of minutes, rinsed off and that's what's come up like. That's where these Drifter Stockton fire pits have got the edge over the more expensive Japanese made Snow Peak fireplace, fire pit I should say. How awesome is that? As you can see I've still got some quite large ginty charcoals there so what I'm going to might do shortly is I'm going to grab a bucket of water, tip them in a bucket of water. That's the thing guys, if you've got ginty charcoal and they're, and they're still so, quite some big pieces, don't let them waste. Whack them in a bucket of water and you'll be able to reuse them again. But I just wanted to show you just how clean that is. Love it. So I'm going to cook on that a lot more than I ever have on a grill before because I tend, tend to cook a real lot on the grill uh, for the reason it's just impossible to clean virtually without using nasty chemicals and that. And even then it's still a, tr a struggle. This here just came up spotlessly clean like that with just ordinary dishwashing liquid and some warm water. And that was a full chicken with the rub that normally sticks on really badly, at least on that other grill for the Uniflame one. So there you go, guys. I just wanted to really show you that, the difference that that makes, that stainless steel grill on that Drifter Stockton fire pit. I'm really happy, I'm impressed. I heard that they were easy to clean, but I had no idea they were that to clean. So, just a bit of a short video, this one really, no major plan, just thought, I'd, you know, why not cook up a, a chicken today and test out. I particularly, particularly wanted to see the, how the, the grill works and just how easy it is to clean. I did, I, to be honest, I didn't think I'd get it to look like brand new again. Not, not at least not with that little effort. So I'm quite happy about that. Uh, so she should look spick and span always, this one. Like it's probably in a year's time, hopefully it'll look the same. So we'll see, eh? Time will tell. So till then, Thanks for watching, if you watched all the way through the end. The chicken tasted great, even though it was overcooked just a tad. It still tasted great. So please subscribe, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, put a like on the video if you liked it. But till next time, take care, be kind to everyone, and see you next time. Cheers.